everyone. Today we're going to talk about our garden experience this year. We had two locations with gardens. One location um, was a lot of uh, potting soil and wood chip mixture and it had in it tomatoes, peppers, melons, tomatillos, and okra. And in that garden, there were three cantaloupe, I think, and one watermelon. And all of those were destroyed by the dog that lives at that place. And so I was pretty upset about that, but I was really impressed that I was able to get them to grow. I haven't been able to grow them before. Um, there's strawberries there. I got a few strawberries. Um, tomatoes didn't do anything. I've never really had much success with tomatoes, even in containers. And peppers, the jalapenos, I ended up with maybe four. And then these little squash or cucumber things. I'm not really sure if I can't remember because I plant all this stuff and I can't even remember what I plant. That's how bad I am. Um, but they were either squash or cucumbers. I cooked them with some squash and ate them like squash. They were pretty good, but I ended up with three of those. And then the tomatillos are still kind of trying to produce, but a lot of them are falling off now, and they're little bitty small kind of tiny little things this big, but not very much success with that one. So the other site is a back to Eden garden kind of thing, and Egypt's gonna tell you about that one. Um, a year ago, going on a year and a half ago, I had a, a truckload of wood chips brought in and completely covered the entire backyard, converted the entire backyard into a, uh, an organic garden. Had a couple of motivations for that. One is I hate mowing, and uh, I hate having to take care of lawn. And the other thing is, is, I want to grow my own food. But, um, so I've had mixed results on the Back to Eden garden. Four cucumbers, all eaten up by aphids. We're not going to get anything out of this. There's flies all over the leaves. Look at all of them. Uh huh. I don't know what they're after. Oh, look, he turned yellow. Yeah, they're, like I said, they're getting destroyed. So uh, aphids, aphids are destroying this plant. Ladybugs can't keep up. But are you? How are you with this year versus last year? Well, I didn't get any tomatoes last year. This year, I'm getting tomatoes. That's good. I got. I didn't get any cucumbers last year, and I'm not getting any cucumbers this year. I never get corn. I always try, but I never get any. I didn't get any lima beans. I planted a whole fence of lima beans last year and didn't get any. I mean, not not one pod grew out of the lima beans at all. But got a lot of blooms again, just like last year. But I can't see any pods. Do you? I don't see any pods. Again, same thing. Lots of blooms, no pods. Potatoes. I planted several potatoes. Uh, looks like I've got one, two, there was three, one maybe there. four coming up. I'm trying to anyway. And uh, they're not doing much. Lettuce is always good. Flowers always do pretty well. I didn't get any echinacea to grow last year. And this year I got one volunteer that came up. I got one volunteer Cherokee purple tomato that came up. I don't know how since I didn't get any fruit from tomatoes last year. <laughs> but at least that I knew of and uh, the root vegetables have been harvested but they're okay the tomatillos are small I don't know you know for not having done a thing to the garden all year just let it grow not water it not do anything for the most part I have no reason to complain so well people would probably ask you why didn't you take better care <laughs> I'm experimenting with this this is a back to Eden system. It does very well in the Pacific Northwest where it was, you know, sort of popularized by um, Paul Gauchy. Um, I know of only one other garden uh, here in this area that uses this method. And so I thought I would try it. Um, uh, so the back to Eden garden 
um, mixed results here in this part of the country with it. Um, uh, the things I love about it are the, the water retention. Uh, those chips hold water and they keep water uh, near the top of the ground, which is great for plants. Um, what I don't like about it is, you know, lots of bugs, um, termite attraction, um, things like that. Hardly any weeding though, and when we when there are weeds, they come up very easily. That's a beauty of it. There's very little maintenance with them, which I like because I'm a busy guy, I work, and you know stuff like that. And frankly, I you know it's no different than the results I would get with any garden I planted directly in the soil here in this part of the country anyway. Um, last year, for instance, I got no tomatoes. This year, I've got tomatoes galore. Last year, I planted a whole fence of pickles and got more pickles than I could can. And I also planted cucumbers at the same time. I only got two or three cucumbers off a whole fence, but I got loads of pickles. Um, this year, the I'm not getting cucumbers and I didn't plant pickles because I didn't need them. Beets have done well. Um, lettuces have done well. Um, Peppers have not done so well. Onions, can't really get them to grow. Got garlic to grow this year. Melons grow pretty well. Um, but brassicas, broccoli, cauliflower, things like that, I can't get them to grow. Um, it, it's just, it's a, it's a mixed bag. I've never been able to get corn, sweet corn or otherwise, to grow in any garden I've planted in this part of the country. <laughs> it's okay. Look, this is a little baby corn, and I asked e Chip if I could pick it because he said it's not gonna do anything, and he said I could pick one, mm -hmm. so now I'm gonna open it. Look at the little silkies. Mm. <gasps> I can eat it! It's like real, but look. Oh, yeah, it's a real cob of corn. <laughs> but look at it. Oh, and look, you can see. Yeah, underdeveloped. And, and I found out on a one guy, that Texas guy, Texas prepper guy or whatever, that these little blank spots are because there's no silk to them or something, but maybe there's silk and it's just not grown. Well, you can see where they've begun to develop, but they've not finished developing. You Let's can see it. the, go ahead. It's sweet. Oh, it's good. You want to try it? Sure. Mm, it's sweet. It is good. Too bad it doesn't grow. Mm -hmm. I wonder why it doesn't grow. I don't know. Let's get more. I've never been able to grow corn out in this part of the country. Never, ever. It gets about this tall and dies. It's just worthless. Hopeless. And it's interesting because they grow corn out here in fields, all kinds of feed corn uh, and things like that for cattle, but I cannot get sweet corn to grow um, under any circumstances, no matter what I do. It gets about two, three feet high and dies. So I don't know, it's sort of mixed results, but gaining some experience, learning to grow my own food is kind of nice. Um, it's fun to be able to can all this stuff and load up our pantry. It's a very satisfying feeling to be able to walk into your backyard and do your produce shopping. I love it. Um, it's a very empowering feeling and I encourage more people to grow their own food. Um, <clears throat> certainly can't hurt. And it, you know, it doesn't cost a great deal either. Um, the way I grow it with the Back Eden Garden <clears throat> also doesn't take a lot of time. It takes almost no water and uh, almost no weeding. I maybe spend, if I did anything with it, I haven't done anything with it this year, but last year I didn't spend any more than 10 or 20 minutes a week out there in the garden and most of that was harvesting. So, anyway. A lot of the crop, a lot of the things that we originally planted never, never sprouted mm -hmm. or if they did, they died because of the, mm -hmm. the cold. Um, so that was an issue. The things that we started indoors ended up all over the backyard because the wind blew them away because I put them outside on a warm sunny day and then the wind took off with them. And again, that's another issue where we live. Uh, wind is a big problem. Several times when I've planted things, I've gone out in the, and, and, and no storms, there's no storms or anything, it's just the high winds, I've gone out in the morning to check on the garden and tomato plants especially, even if they're staked down or just lying on the si on their side. And it just bends the cage right mm -hmm. over. And that too, especially these out <clears> there. <throat> um, they got, they're very large plants and we went out to discover that the winds had taken 
all of them down. And they're, they are not ruined, of course, but they'll take it. They'll take it. Um, so that's an issue that I've struggled with in the past. Egypt doesn't like squash. I've planted squash in the past and not had much success with those because I don't use a lot of fertilizers. I don't use a lot of um, bug stuff. What do you call it? Insecticides. Insecticides, thank you. I don't really put yeah. anything on them I don't use it because I don't like to add that to what I'm growing. But the little squash bugs have always just totally gotten all of the squash. I usually end up Fine with, by me. Yeah, you <laughs> had it. I usually end up with a bottom rot on my tomatoes if I do get them. Um, that's a soil issue, but it is it is as E Chip said, kind of difficult. I always look at other people in in the area who do have these successful gardens, and I never ask them how they're successful or why they're successful, if they're fertilizing or what. But I do see lots of people with huge amounts of squash, you know, the stuff that people grow here, squash, onions, tomatoes, okra, okra, um, some peppers and things like that. Okay, everyone, that this sunflower thing is the most fun ever. I am having such a blast with this. I found a little worm in it and everything and a spider and there's tons of ants in it. And so now I am going to just get all of them out of this little flower and dry them out, I guess. I don't really know, but I'm having a fun time. <laughs> You know, I see gardening as a means to an end, mm -hmm. not, not, not an end in itself. And uh, so I, what I like about the Back to Eden garden is that I can plant it and pretty much not have to spend a lot of time on it. Because you and I work, we have these projects going on like solar generator and stuff like that. We really don't have time, you know, to spend uh, on it. And But then when we're starving in the winter, what are we going to do? Yeah. <laughs> That's when you make friends with somebody who is a semi-professional. Yeah. Yes, and, and you know has all the what stuff can we trade? you don't really like. Yes, I've got has all the stuff, yeah. hundred cans yes. of this. Right, yeah, I've got, I've got loads of squash. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, okay. Well, if I have to, I have to. What would you do with it? I'll just I'll eat it. Especially it's going to be, basically you've got boiled squash. <laughs> but I just planted, too, um, some stuff for fall. Same kind of things, carrots and turnips and radishes. We've got potatoes out there. Yeah, there's potatoes still in the garden, but I'm gonna be anxious to see how all of those grow and if they produce in the wood chips because the beets and the turnips, I mean, pardon me, the beets and the rutabagas are a little bit funky looking because of the wood chips because they grow because around they grow, them and yeah. things like that I mean, and I, we don't have any Not raised, a pretty shape no <laughs> we don't have raised beds or anything like that so if the carrots do make want to be interest it's going to be interesting to see i think they're going to be stubby what well i did plant a variety that is kind of a short little stubby variety anyway but i'm going to be anxious to see how they grow around the wood chips i mean they still eat Mm -hmm. Tastes just as good as a straight one, but... Yep. Sounds good. So, that's our garden. Those are our gardens. And, um, you know, we, um, it's just part of a very large variety of things that we're doing in preparation for a move to contentment. I mean, we're learning to grow our own food. We're learning to become more self-sufficient. We're you know, learning to uh, to do a lot more things for ourselves and become closer uh, to the things that sustain us so that when we do get out there, you know, we're not, it's not a total shock to us. We have a, we have a way to, we have at least some knowledge and means to, you know, move us along. By no means are we anywhere close to where we probably ought to be. <laughs> but uh, this is a long, this is a process and uh, we're really enjoying it. It's fun. So. It's fun to learn things. Anyway, folks, thanks for spending your time with us, and uh, thanks for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, make comments. Uh, we'd love to have interaction with you. Thank you for viewing, and uh, please tell, us, tell, tell someone about us. And you want to stick around because mm -hmm. we are in the process of... I don't want to give too much information away, but we are going to have a little... What would you call it? A, a prize? We're going to have a subscriber drive. 
uh, during the month of October, isn't it? Yeah. And on, I think it's on October 31st, we're going to have a giveaway, <clears throat> um, a random drawing among uh, those of you who help us uh, build our subscribership. And uh, I promise it will be a fun, functional, useful thing that uh, that I think most anyone would enjoy having around uh, the house. So, or on your homestead, wherever, in your shop, in your garden, just anywhere. Yes, we're so. really into useful items around here. And it's and gotta be functional. Yes. Very much so. But anyway, stick around for that. And again, thanks for for coming along with us on the on this adventure. And like, subscribe, and share. Yeah.